Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. So as I get ready to go on my three week vacation, I decided to purchase this automated feeder by Eheim. You could set it to feed your system four different times per day, and it can hold up to six weeks worth of food in its chamber. So I decided to give it a shot. I've been playing with it a little bit before I leave on vacation to make sure that everything is adjusted correctly and I don't overfeed or underfeed the fish. This is the food I'll be using. I made a concoction of uh, the special Blue Zoo mixture. Really good food here. Um, various, size of, various sizes of grains in this or pellets. Uh, Life Spectrum, I give them a little bit of that because it's high in phosphates. I don't want to uh, come back to a whole bunch of diatom. Uh, this Elos pellet food, which has no phosphate in it at all. Uh, Cyclopses, and I'll just mix that into the chamber and uh, feed the fish with that. So the next thing I want to do is go over the automated feeder, put it together for you guys and show you what it looks like. So this is what you'll receive in the box. Here's the head unit right here. This is the brains of the operation. A clamp to fasten the automated feeder to the rim of your system. The food basket the cover for the food basket goes on top of here and then a screw to screw on the clamp to the automated feeder. So now we'll go ahead and put this thing together. It's very easy to do. I've already gone ahead and placed the batteries inside the head unit. Um, the head unit has a lid up on top. It just pops off and the batteries are inserted. inserted. It takes two AA batteries that come with the unit as well. So it does come with the batteries. I don't want to take it out because I've already programmed my unit and I think you guys can pretty much figure that part out on your own. So let's go ahead and put this together. We'll put the food basket together here. Snap that on like this. And then you'll see that this aligns with the bottom of here. And then just simply pushes up. It's getting a little top heavy so we'll lay it down. And then this portion here the clamp is going to fasten to the back of the Eheim in this fashion. No, I'm sorry, this fashion. So I'll go ahead and you can see the little hole here. I'll go ahead and screw this on off camera and then we'll take it from there. Alright, so here's the Eheim all uh, assembled. You can see it only took a few seconds to do, less than a minute. Um, once it's all assembled, and you have the batteries in it, you're going to want to set the clock and I'll show you guys how to do that and I'll also, sh also show you how to set the times for the automated feeder to turn on. Um, the feeder is going to be resting on your tank in this fashion. There's a little trap door here. Depending on how much food you want to come out is how far open you can have this. And you can see inside there's kind of a compartment where the food will come in so you're not going to have the whole basket empty and out into your tank. So it does have a fail safe in that regard. So you can see where I marked mine. I've already played with it and tested it to see how much of the food that I have. Um, the pellets mostly will uh, fall out. If you have flakes, then obviously you're going to open it up a little further. Um, this is for dry food only. So if you were thinking you can use one of these for some uh, frozen mice, mice shrimp or any other kind of frozen food, uh, that's not what this is for. It's for dry food only. There's also a button right here. It says Eheim up on top. So I'll go ahead and rest it like this, like it would be in the tank. And push the button once, and you can see what it does. It rotates, the trap door is open, the food would spill, and then it comes right back up to the upward position here. You could also set it in the modes to do it twice if you want to have it rotate twice during one feeding because you want to feed them a little bit more it'll uh, rotate again and give a second dosing of food so we'll go ahead and show you how to program uh, this unit okay to set the clock originally when you put the batteries in it'll default to midnight zero 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 hours it does do military time which is pretty neat um, that way you can't mess up uh, a.m. versus p.m. Three buttons on the front. The first one here is a mode button. The middle one is a plus button. 
and the third one is a set button. So when you first get your unit, you want to put the uh, set the time. You're gonna hit set. You see the uh, first number blinking, and then you hit the plus button. It only goes up. You can't go down. So if you miss it, you gotta go all the way around the clock again to get to the point you want. This is the actual time right now, so I'm not gonna um, push the plus button. You guys get the idea. The next one, uh, you want to get to the minutes, so you hit mode, and it gets to the minutes. Again, hit the plus button to get to the minutes that you want, and then when you're all done, you hit set. So next we'll go ahead and program the times that I want this to feed. Okay, from the time screen, what we're going to do is press and hold the mode button. 1300, which is the equivalent of 1 p.m., is the first feeding that I already have it set for. But I'm going to go ahead and pretend like it's not set. The next thing I want to do is push set. It'll blink. Again, let's hit the plus button. And like I said, it doesn't have a minus button, so you have to go all the way around the clock. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I'm holding it down and getting back to 1 o'clock. Okay, there we are. Hit the mode button to go to minutes. And again, you hit the plus button. You guys get the idea. And then hit the mode button one more time because we're not done. You could see, I think, you could see the little light blinking up on top. What you see is a number one with two arrows pointing down. That tells me right now it's set to rotate. Uh, this is the first cycle or the first setting of the day. And the two arrows tells me that it's going to rotate two times at one o'clock. The food drum is going to rotate twice. So we hit uh, the plus sign. Now the number one's blinking with no arrows. That tells me it's not going to do anything at one o'clock. The first setting that's set at one o'clock will do nothing. Hit the plus button one more time. You see the one arrow. It's going to rotate one time and we'll put it back on the two arrows because I want it to rotate twice at one o'clock. Next thing you want to do is hit set and then hit mode to get to the next one. Now at 1600 hours or 4 p.m. you could see it's set for uh, the second cycle and it only has one arrow so it's only going to rotate once at 4 p.m. I'm not going to repeat the steps that I've done because it's exactly the same as the first uh, cycle that I showed you. Hit uh, mode one more time. Now we're at the third time of the day that it's going to rotate and feed the fish at 8 o'clock or 20 hundred hours. And again I have one arrow down that's going to be one rotation. And that's going to be it for them uh, to be fed for, for this day. They're going to be fed three times. One feeding will uh, give them two barrel rolls of the food and the subsequent two feedings will only give them one barrel roll of the food. And then if you have, uh, you would like, you have the option to do a fourth time of the day to feed them. I'm not using it because uh, I don't want to come home to a bunch of diatoms. So that's it for programming it. So let's go ahead and set it up and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, I did purchase this food catcher for about five bucks. It's a suction cup against the glass there and that's what holds it in place. Uh, the purpose of the food catcher is obviously to catch the food, but also to prevent the food from spreading out through the surface of the water and going down your overflows. So the fish will be uh, able to come up to the surface of the water and eat whatever food is still in the f uh, food trap. And obviously the pellets are heavy enough to fall into the system and be pushed around by the pumps and the fish will be able to chase those easily. All right, here's the automated feeder clamped in. Uh, just set the feeder on top of your lip of your tank and then tighten down here like a kind of like a vise. And it sits very firmly and securely on your tank. The one thing that I was worried about is having the screen here. But because uh, I'm using uh, the BRS quarter uh, square um, netting here, the food actually falls perfectly into the uh, food catcher down below. What I was going to do is gonna, I was going to make a, a custom screen so that the screen came here, had an opening here, and then went back around. 
Um, I was a little worried doing that because the Anthias fish that I have are uh, jumpers, and so is the Starry Blenny. So it actually worked out. I didn't have to uh, make another screen. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove the uh, food bucket to put food in it and do a demonstration. I'm going to do this one-handed here. Take this lid off. Oops. I already have some food pre-mixed in the little cup. I'm going to obviously put more food in this when I leave for three weeks. This is just for demonstration. Let's put the lid back on, snap it on. Okay, let's make sure that chamber is not full of food, and it's not. Pop it right back on. Grab another cup here. So I can catch the food. And then we'll go ahead and open this up to where I have it already marked. Hit the button, let the drum rotate. And that's one rotation there. And you can see the amount of food they get for one rotation and for the size pellets that I'm feeding them. I'll be relying on this automated feeder to feed the fish while I'm gone for three weeks. One of the biggest failures that occurs with these automated feeders is having that little slot at the bottom where the food falls out to clog up with food. That's why it's important that if you're going to feed food that it, that it be dry food versus wet food that could coagulate against each other. And also if you're going to be feeding flake food in these, make sure you crush the flake food um, down so that it does not clog that opening. One of the other fail safes that I'll be having is having the owner of the LFS that I go to uh, come to the house every four days. He'll be checking on the food to make sure that it's working or the feeder is working properly. And he'll also be checking the tank to make sure everything's up to par. And he will also be um, the auto top off. He'll also be ensuring that the auto top off is uh, refilled with RODI water. It takes about four to five days for the five gallons of RODI water to uh, go empty. So guys, that'll be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys were thinking about automated feeders, I hope this video helps. If you guys have automated feeders that you're currently using and you think they are better than this Eheim, I'd like to hear from you guys. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.